Hello, and welcome to my QTP video tutorial where I will show you how to write a function with inputs and no return value. In this video, I'll be answering the following three topics. First, what is a function with inputs and no return value? Second, what is a real world example of a function with inputs and no return value? And third, how do I write the code to use it? As a reminder, to stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. This moves us to the first topic which asks the question, what is a function with inputs and no return value? A function is a reusable piece of code that has a specific task it is responsible for doing. There are several ways to make a function not do the same thing every time. One of those ways is to pass in inputs, which can make the function do different things depending on the values that are passed in. At the end of the function's execution, you have the ability to pass out a return value. However, this is optional, so we will exclude this from the example on the following slides so that I can show you how that works. This moves us to the second topic which asks the question, what is a real world example of a function with inputs and no return value? So Let's imagine you're going to a nice sit down restaurant. Uh, you walk in, you're greeted by an attendant at the front door. They take you to your table and seat you. A uh, waiter or waitress will come by a few minutes later, take your drink order, and give you a menu. After a few minutes, the waiter or waitress will return with your drinks and take your food order. They can walk away from your table, come back a few minutes later with the food that you've ordered. At, after you've finished eating, uh, the waiter or waitress will then bring your bill. So at that point, you would then put cash next to the bill. Uh, let's say that your bill was $10 and you put in $15. Uh, you could tell the waiter or waitress to keep the difference as a tip. This payment process is an example of a function with input parameters and no return value. It's an example of a function as a repeatable set of steps because every time you go to that restaurant, after you finish eating, the waiter or waitress will bring you your bill. You'll then need to pay uh, and if you paid with cash every time, you could just ask them to keep the difference and not send you out any cash back. Now there's input parameters to this because you're paying with cash. So let's say that you wanted to pay $15 again like what I had just mentioned. Maybe you put in a $10 bill and a $5 bill. Those could be two inputs. Now there's no return value because the waiter or waitress would not bring anything back to you. Since you had just asked them to keep the difference, they would not have a reason to come back to the table, so there would not be any return value from that. This now moves us to the third topic, which asks the question, how do I write the code to use it? I will now show you how to write the code in QTP to create a function that has input parameters and no return value. To create a function, you need to begin by typing the word function, then hit the spacebar. Once you hit the spacebar, you'll see that QTP automatically did some things for me. You'll see that it created an empty line at line 2. Then it put the words end function on line 3. So what happened is QTP automatically recognized that I was looking to create a function. It knew that I would need to put some code in the body of the function to be executed. So it created an empty line at line 2 so that I could put that code in. Then it knew that I would also need the words end function at the end of the function for the code to work properly. So it went ahead and filled that stuff in for me. We're now ready to give our function a name. Now to call back to the real world example that we had used a couple of slides before, I will name our function uh, payment process. But you can name your function anything you would like. It doesn't make a difference. Once you've typed in the name of your function, you need to type in an open parentheses. You're now ready to type in the inputs that you'll send into the function. Inputs are optional. You don't need to send them in. Uh, you can send in one, two, or as many inputs as you would like. It doesn't make a difference. So go ahead and type in the name of your first input, which in this example I will call payment one, just to go back to the $10 bill and the $5 bill example that we had used. Once you've typed in the name of your input, type a comma. Hit the space bar to create a space. Then type in the name of your next input, which I'll call payment two. 
Once you've continued this process until you've entered all of the inputs that you would like to use, you then need to type a closing parenthesis, then hit the Enter key to move into the body of the function. Now the body of the function that we'll be executing in this example is what I would like to do is create a variable that I'll assign the total amount of the bill. I'll then subtract off the two currency bills that were given to the waiter or waitress to pay that bill. So what would happen is the negative amount would then be the tip that would be left for the waiter or the waitress. So I'll create a variable that I will call bill amount. And I'll assign it a value of $10. Then hit the enter key to create a new line. Now what we'll do is we'll create a variable that will say tip to waiter, waitress. And what I'll do is take the bill amount, subtract off the payment, the value in the payment one input, which in our example, the first bill that we were giving was a $10 bill. Then I'll subtract off the next bill that was given, which I'm using to reference it by the second input parameter, which is payment two. So to walk through this as an example, let's say that the bill amount is $10, which I've set that value here on line two. We'll take $10, subtract off the first bill that was given, which we would hypothetically say would be $10. So that would be $10 minus $10, which would then be zero. Then subtract off the second payment, which would have been the $5 bill in our real world example. So what would be left is the tip to waiter or waitress variable would have a value of minus $5. That would be the amount of tip that would be left for the waiter or waitress. Now in this example, all we're doing is calculating that amount. We're not actually sending out the output value from that. Uh, since this example where we're not sending a return value. This now concludes our video where I've shown you how to make a function with inputs and no return value. Thank you and I hope that you have a great day.